What's up guys, welcome back. And in this video, I'd like to take a look at having a central store for managing our global state. We'll take a look at doing this using services, which I think is the simplest to get started with. Just know that there is a dedicated package called ngrx store, which uses rxjs to handle state management in larger applications. So if you're building a real application, I would definitely recommend taking a look at using that. If you've ever used Redux or Vuex or any Flux-like architecture, it's very similar to that. But like I said, in this video, we'll stick to services to keep it simple. Okay, so let's take a look at a diagram of what we currently have. So right now, our single source of truth lives in this parent to-do list component, and we're just passing down input bindings uh, to the to-do item and passing up events whenever we need to make changes to this to-dos array. And this is fine for simple applications, but once you have more components, maybe some are siblings, then this starts to get really messy. So a good idea, let me just move over here, would be, again, it's the same diagram, but now it would make sense to have a central store and we move all of our to-dos here or any global state that we need. So this will include all the functions that mutate this to-dos array as well and just inject it wherever we need it. So that's what we'll do here using Angular services. So let's make a new service that's going to hold our global state and all the functions. So let's do ng generate service and let's put it in a services folder and let's call it to-do. And that made a todos.service.typescript file. So let's take a, take a look at that. So right here in services. So now let's move everything over from our to-do list where our to-dos array lives into this to-do service. And we'll continue from there. So let's start with our state. So I'm going to open my to-do list and I'm going to grab all of my state here. So right here, all this stuff. Let's grab this back to our service and let's paste it right here. And let me just grab the to do interface as well. So this back here, let's paste that in. And I think it's just one level deep. Cool. And I'm going to put the to-dos down here. And since this is a service and not a component, there's no ng on in it. So you can initialize it in the constructor, but I'm just going to put it in here. So for example, the title is just going to be that. The ID for to-do will just be that. And just be empty string here. And then the filter will be all by default and then this would be true and I'll just paste in the to do's and it's the same as before okay now let's move the methods over so I'm just gonna grab everything in here just grab and let's put it in our service all that. So underneath the constructor and save that. And I'm going to comment everything out in here. Uh, but we're going to uncomment some stuff out because some of the stuff does belong in here. And let's take a look at that in a second. So adding to do's. This still will keep this in our to do list component, but we'll move some of the logic over to the service. So let me uncomment this. And I'm also going to bring back this state because this is the state that requires the ng model. Uh, yeah, so let me remove all of this. And all of this. And let's keep the title like I said. So the title is right here. And 
So this we no longer need. Let me just comment this out. And this can be done in the service as well. And this resets the title and we'll leave that in here. So how do we make use of this to do service in here? So to do that, you would go up to first, you have to decide where you want to inject and where you want this service to be available. I'm going to put it in our to do list because this is the parent component. And everything else is a child of this component. So this is the to do list component. So I'm just going to put it in here. But if there were siblings here, then this to do service would not be accessible from there. So in that case, you can inject it into uh, into app module TS into into this providers array. But like I said, I'll just keep it in our to do list component. So let's just make a new providers key here. And let's add a to do service. So I'm going to press tab and VS code should import that and it does cool. So like I said, this should be available in this component and any child of this component. But if we want to use it, we have to use dependency injection in the components that want to use it. So obviously we want to use it here. So if you used any other language that uses dependency injection, you're probably used to something doing something like this. So private to do service, and that's a type to do service. And then you would do um, this dot to do service equals actually you put it in, the, in the arguments. So, so you would do to do service to do service. And then this dot to do service, the instance variable gets whatever is passed in. So like this, and this works. And you can do it like this if you want. But since dependency injection is used so much in Angular, there is a shorthand. And we'll make use of that. So we no longer need to define it. All we have to do is put the word private in front here. And that should do exactly the same thing. So now we should have an instance of to do service available in this component, and we can use it. So I'm going to save that. So now in here, in adding to do's instead of this to do's push, we just want to call the this the to do service push and this will add to the to do's array which lives there now. But we have to change the method signature, we have to accept a to do now. We'll do that in a second, we'll just pass the to do title here. And as you can see, there's a red underline because our method signature doesn't match. So let's go into here. And let's look for add to do. So now we're going to accept a to do title. And that's going to be a string. And instead of this to do title, it's being passed in now. So we'll just do that. And now we can still have this, that's fine. This is still an instance variable on this to do service. But like I said, the title is now an argument being passed in. And false, false. This is being done on the parents. So we can just get rid of that. And this is fine as well. Okay. So this shouldn't work yet. Uh, yeah, so it's not working. That's because in our parent component, to do list, uh, we no longer have this to do's filtered method. As you can see, we commented out all the methods here. But we did inject that to do service. So we can just call it from there. So we can just do to do service right here to do service dot to do's filtered. And you can see that it has the correct number of to do's, but it's not showing it. So let's see what's going on there. Okay, so now we just have to add this to do service in front of everything before because we moved it over. So let's go ahead and just go through this. 
So let's do this, to do service. So let's do that. And I'm going to change all these filters. So for this, if you want to follow like strict object orientation rules, you can make getters and setters for this. But I'm just grabbing the property directly from the to-do service, which I think is fine. Let's add this one. And I think that's it. Let's see if that works. So there you go. Now we're getting the to-dos from the to-do service. Let's see what else errors we have. I think I missed one. Remaining. Yep, I missed remaining. And yeah, no more errors. Cool. All right, let's see if adding works. Okay, so that doesn't work. Trim of undefined. Let's go back to our service. Oh, okay, so in our to-do list component, we don't want to call this one because this one is still local to this component and then it just delegates to the service. So that should work. Adding. Okay, cool. So now everything in the to-do item is not going to work because we moved everything out of the to-do list component. So let's replace everything in there too with using the uh, with using the to do service. So I'm gonna get rid of all of these event listeners. And in the to do item, um, it's going to grab this as well. And we're going to inject it as well into the to do item. So let's do that. Make sure we import this. Cool. And we no longer need any of these events. We still need the input binding. We actually don't need any of this now. So I'm going to remove all these. And then in our to do item, we can just refer to our to do service here. So let's start with this. So to do service dot done edit and same with this to do service let me just copy this same with this same with this and same with this and same with delete and let's see if this works now so adding already worked from before let's see if checking works okay See if deleting works. Okay. See if check all works. It does. That still works. Uh, the counter still works. Uh, see if this still works. It does. Cool. See if the clear completed still works. And it does. Cool. So everything still works. But now we have a central store where all of our global state is held. In the next video, we'll take a look at making Ajax calls to a backend API so we can persist our to-dos. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one. Okay, thanks. Bye.